Hello and welcome to Mary Live. This is Dr. Mark Mervalli. My friends, does the Catholic Church teach that the Blessed Virgin Mary mediates each and every grace that we receive from Jesus with redemption? The answer is absolutely. Each and every grace without exception. And this is so clear in the sources of Revelation. So let's go through those sources uh, very briefly and then talk about what difference does it make to us today, to us in the 21st century. So first of all, the church again teaches that every single grace from the redemption merited by Jesus and secondarily by Our Lady, the new Adam, the new Eve, uh, every single grace comes to us through the intercession of our Blessed Mother. Now, where do we see that in Scripture? Right at the beginning of the New Testament. Luke 1, 38, when Our Lady says, Be it done unto me according to your word, when she gives the yes to allow the author of all graces to enter human history, she is already mediating each and every grace because she's mediating to us Jesus Christ, who's the source of all graces. I find it fascinating and even uh, courageous that in the book uh, Mary for Evangelicals, written by two Protestant theologians back in 2005, uh, that they say, don't deprive Catholics of the title Mediatrix of All Graces for Mary, insofar as she brings us Jesus, who's the author of all graces. It'd be great if all Catholics understood that. So just in virtue of Mary's yes, she already merits the title Mediatrix of All Graces, but it even gets better because we see, for example, in Luke 1, 39, Mary visits Elizabeth. What happens? Well, Mary brings the unborn Jesus in her womb. It's a beautiful interuterine communication of grace between the unborn Jesus and the unborn John. Uh, John leaps in the womb of his mother and Elizabeth starts to prophesy by the Holy Spirit. Why? Because Mary has mediated Jesus. In this case, it's the unborn Jesus. And in this case, we're not saying that Mary did so with that specific purpose. We're simply saying that's the truth. That's the reality. Mary brings the presence of Jesus uh, to John and Elizabeth, and they are both given a special grace. That's what it means to be the mediatrix of all graces, that Mary has an instrumental role in bringing us the graces of Jesus Christ. Let's go to Cana, John 2, uh, verses 5 and following, uh, but even starting with verses 1, verse 1 and, and 1 through 10. What happens at Cana? Well, in this case, Mary has a specific grace in mind. She wants the miracle for the sake of the wedding couple because they're running out of wine. So in this case, it is a direct, moral, deliberate, specific act of Our Lady to mediate the graces of Jesus. And as we know, uh, Jesus does what Our Lady asks. Uh, Fulton Sheen uh, does, has a beautiful summary of this. It's basically saying that conversation between Jesus and Mary, Jesus is saying, look, if I do this miracle, we're on the fast track from Cana to Calvary. And that's what Our Lady says, do whatever he tells you. And so Mary clearly, explicitly, directly mediates a grace, the grace of the miracle of Cana, but also she mediates the public ministry of Jesus because, in fact, Cana does lead to Calvary. So let's go to Calvary. Uh, John 19, 26 and 27, as St. John Paul II tells us, when Jesus says, behold your mother, intrinsic in the word mother is the role of mediatrix. Uh, have you ever met a mother that doesn't intercede for her children? At least, you know, I'm talking about a whole and healthy mother. Uh, no, that's what they're doing all the time. Hundreds of times a day, mothers intercede for their children. Well, in this case, when, again, according to St. John Paul II, uh, whose, whose majesty and genius uh, is, is, is never ending, when Jesus says that word, behold your mother, remember, that's not an invitation. It's a divine command. It's a gift that Jesus gives personally to each one of us, the gift of Mary as mother. So if we don't receive Mary uh, as a direct gift from Jesus, that's what we're rejecting. We're rejecting a direct 
personal individual gift from the Savior. So in that word, mother implies mediatrix. In this case, because she's the spiritual mother of all people, she's not our natural mother. She didn't give us our nature. She didn't give us our bodies. But she's our spiritual mother in that sense. To be spiritual mother, she has to be the mediatrix of all graces as well. We can even go to uh, Acts 1.14, the event of Pentecost, because again, according to the great wisdom of St. John Paul II, when the Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost, he's coming in special answer to the prayers of his human spouse, Mary. So as St. Maximilian Kolbe would say, that the Holy Spirit is the divine sanctifier. The Holy Spirit chooses to act only through Mary. We saw that at the Annunciation. We will see it again here at, at Pentecost. Uh, in which case that Mary is the mediatrix of each and every grace of the Holy Spirit. Uh, such is the will of God that since the Holy Spirit and Mary coming together was so fruitful to give us uncreated grace, that is Jesus Christ, that would continue in the order of created grace. So we see this even in the patristic image, the first image of Our Lady with the fathers of the church, that she's the new Eve. She's the new mother of the living. So you have these wonderful expressions like St. Jerome, death through Eve, life through Mary. Well, what kind of life is it? It's life of grace. That's what Mary's mediating. And St. Irenaeus will say in 180 uh, AD, that Mary is the, quote, cause of salvation for herself and the whole human race. Isn't that astounding? In the second century, that second century Mariology. So they understood that Mary's spiritual motherhood would also eventually include the mediation of grace. Well, let's go to the popes. And we can do this in a, in a, in a blitzkrieg fashion. Every pope from Benedict the Fourteenth back at the end of the 18th century to Benedict the 16th on the day he would announce that he would retry, that he would uh, resign as Holy Father on February 11th. So Feast of Our Lady of Lourdes. Every Pope has made reference to Our Lady as the mediatrix of all graces. Uh, this is also a truth that we see in the Second Vatican Council. Lumen Gentium 62 says that Mary intercedes for the gifts of eternal salvation. Uh, mediatrix is also contained. And if you see the footnotes, it'll make reference to papal references of mediatrix of all graces. Well, why wasn't mediatrix of all graces included? Uh, because there was a group of uh, German, Austrian, Swiss, uh, Belgian theologians uh, who influenced certain uh, bishops saying it wouldn't be good for ecumenical reasons. Well, what's really good for ecumenism, my friends, is the full truth. Uh, and, and that's what our separated brethren, the expression then, now it's our brothers and sisters are Christ, we're not Catholic. That's what they deserve. They deserve the full truth. So let's not water down what the church has as doctrine. And we know that it continues to be doctrine because St. John Paul II would use the title Mediatrix of All Graces on eight separate occasions as the definitive interpreter of the Second Vatican Council, that this truth can't go away. This is a doctrine of the church. So, each and every grace that we receive comes to us through the intercession of Our Lady. What does that mean for us personally? Well, personally, it means you want to consecrate yourself to Our Lady. Now, many of you have already done that. But I would say uh, it's always good to re-consecrate yourself to Our Lady. I uh, find it very fruitful every morning to do to renew my uh, St. Louis Marie de Montfort consecration, the two paragraphs. One starts with, I, faithless sinner, renew and ratify, etc., those are the two paragraphs that are really the heart of the consecration. Uh, but if she's the mediatrix of all graces, A, and B, if you want to be as closely united to Jesus as you can, and that can only happen through grace, therefore, C, give yourself entirely to Our Lady. And if you haven't done that before, certainly you can go through, there's various uh, programs and, and preparation. De Montfort has one. There's more recent one with, uh, you know, the 33 days of morning glory, all of which are fine. But if you feel the call right now to give yourself to Our Lady, then do it. You can do it in your own words. Mother, I love you. I want to be closer to Jesus. I want to be true to my baptismal promise to Jesus. I therefore give myself to you as 
my mother, I give myself entirely to you so that you can unite me to Jesus in ways I can't do on my own. I consecrate myself to you, mother. That's a consecration, and that's important. That's the personal level. And remember, Mediatrics of All Graces is the foundation of uh, most of our devotions, from the rosary to scapular to consecration. But there's another reason why we have to acknowledge that Mary's the Mediatrics of All Graces. And that's because, quite frankly, my friends, uh, we're, as a global family, in a global mess. We're not doing well. Things are difficult, chaotic, uh, and declining. Do we not need the Mediatrics of All Graces to give us a new distribution of grace, a new historic release of grace? Absolutely we do. Will she do it? Yes, we. she will. Uh, how do we know? Because she's told us she will in, in, a, in a great series of Marian apparitions uh, in this 20th, including 21st century. What do we have to do? We have to acknowledge it publicly. We have to solemnly define it. And that can only be done by the Vicar of Christ. So when the Pope solemnly defines that Mary is the spiritual mother of all peoples, which include her role as co-redemptrix, mediatrix of all graces and advocate, right? The mother who suffers for us, the mother who nourishes us in the order of grace, as Vatican II tells us, Lumen Gentium 61, and the mother who defends us and intercedes for us. When that is done, we can expect historic grace. And I know the word historic may be overused, but in this case, it's understatement. There will be such a release of grace that it can be comparable to the first release of grace we receive with redemption. That's what Our Lady has said. I would believe her. Our Lady keeps her promises. And let's do our part. Let's pray for our Holy Father to solemnly proclaim her as the mediatrix of all grace, as part of her overall role as the spiritual mother of all peoples. That gift Jesus gave us from the cross. Let's behold our mother like never before. Let's do it in a solemn dogma. And that can only be done by our Holy Father. So what are we to do? We're to pray for his heart. We're to petition him. I just sent another letter to the Holy Father last week. You can send as many letters as you want. Uh, they should all be respectful and we should all be talking uh, as children to our Father, and God willing, there's love there. But even if there's not love there, there must be obedience there. So write him a letter. Uh, send him another note. Uh, Holy Father, please consider proclaiming this fifth Marian dogma. Please consider defining Mary as our spiritual mother of all peoples so that the grace can come. And I want to close with how I believe Our Lady sees this. Our Lady sees all of her children uh, are we surprised there's so many weeping statues? Does that surprise us? What if you saw every abortion? What if you saw every family breakup, every divorce, every time uh, there was abuse in families, every time uh, there was a, a same-sex marriage effort instead of the authentic marriage between man and woman? Uh, when we see the, the, the global situation with, in Russia, in Ukraine, and many other parts of the world, of course she's weeping. Why? Because she has this potential to bring us the graces of remedy, but she can't do it until we say yes. That dogma, my friends, that dogma is the Pope saying yes for all of us. It's the Pope saying yes on behalf of the human race that A, we do acknowledge Our Lady as the spiritual mother of all peoples, co-redemptrix, mediatrix, and advocate, and B, we want our intercession right now because we see by the day the need. We see by the day the moral decline, the natural disasters, the wars and rumors of wars, whether they be global or whether they be in the hearts of the faithful. The Holy Father has said uh, several times now that we're now in a piecemeal World War III, uh, but it'll get worse. Please do your part. Pray daily for the fifth Marian dogma. Just pray for the heart of the Holy Father. I strongly advise you to pray the prayer of the Lady of All Nations. I believe it's an inspired prayer specifically for this dogma, for this proclamation. And petition the Holy Father. Send him a, 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 a brief note. Um, for all the things that we do, it takes about three minutes. Just write to Pope Francis, Vatican City, 00120. 
put three U.S. postage stamps on there, and it'll get there, and then leave it to Our Lady of the impact it has. But he has to know that we still, as the census fidelium, as the faithful throughout the world, believe this as an important, critically important element for the church today. He's already received over 8 million petitions from 180 countries just in the last 25 years. But if he hasn't received your petition, then you've got something to do. So let's ask Our Lady to intercede. Let us uh, buttress, uh, strengthen, resolve our belief that she is what the church teaches, the mediatrix of all graces. And let's pray to her for our new historic release of grace as the mediatrix of all graces. And let's pray the prayer of the Lady of all nations. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Father, send now your Spirit over the earth. Let the Holy Spirit live in the hearts of all nations, that they may be preserved from degeneration, disasters, and war. May the Lady of all nations, the Blessed Virgin Mary, be our advocate. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for being with us at Mary Live. God bless you all.